Good morning, guys. Afternoon, night, wherever you are. Today, I've been looking forward to for this for a very long time. Today, we get to go to Highland Valley Copper. It's Canada's biggest open pit copper mine. And it's just located right outside of Camelot. It's about, I don't know, an hour's drive-ish. So we're here. They've got an open house, so they're going to show us a whole bunch of equipment. And apparently, they've even got mine tours, so you get to go in the actual pit and have a look around. It's going to be freaking awesome. Temperature today, it's, it's she's a warm one. It's, I think in, we're, we're in Lisa's car because it's all gravel up here. So Lieutenant, or um, sorry, Grover doesn't work very well on gravel. So it said 25 degrees Celsius and I'll do it in the bloop bloop down below what works out to Fahrenheit, but it's so cool. It's like big boy toys. Can't wait for today. So we're going to do the little bit of the fair around here. And then I think they're taking us into the mine. Now it says that I have to wear clothes closed shoes, closed toe shoes, and I imagine I'll have to wear my prosthetic because I imagine they've got buses or whatever to get in, but this will be so cool. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's a copper mine that's called Highland Valley Copper, and it's Canada's biggest copper mine. I'll put some stats on the bottom about them, but pretty incredible. I think it's a half a mile wide by two miles the other way, by two miles deep. I think... I'll put the correction on the bottom, so let's get out on today. DJ, can you please roll that intro? Hey everybody, my name is Andrew Adley. After a workplace accident, I was left as a bump knee amputee. I had a decision to make. Get busy living or get busy dying. Obviously, you only have one life, so I made a decision to get busy living, exploring every opportunity that is presented to me. Tune in every week for different adventures, both from accessibility standpoint to adventures with my family and friends. And every adventure begins with one leg at a time. Okay, let's go have a look what's going around here the the ground's really hard and bumpy so you guys will have to excuse my the driving I got me saying Kenzie here and the family mm -hmm. hell yeah you guys want to take a professional photo I find that more impressive. I'm so glad the pictures were free as the exposure was just brutal. Now I should mention that this entire day was completely 100% free from the course the pictures just got taken to hot dogs and drinks later on and then of course all their staff. They had buses to bring you up to this, this center here. Of course we had accessibility parking so we got put right in but they had buses to bring up all these people and of course so the staff and then here, the mine I think was mostly shut down during the time so can you imagine the billions or millions it's costing to shut it down I gotta give it to tech and Copper Valley copper mine is it's just it was an incredible event so of course they had all their safety gear on site they were actually doing mine rescues so this little girl here is hanging from a I guess a lowering um, platform and then they of course they had all their fire trucks there it was pretty incredible to see Good. How are you? 
Look at this thing, guys. Massive. It's like big boy toys. Look at the exhaust on that thing. I'll zoom into it. You can put your head in that thing. Massive truck. After drooling over the rock truck and the fire truck for a while and having my time with them, we headed over to get in line up for the mine tours. Now, they were taking people around on these buses to these different areas of the mine. One was where they break down the rock to get the copper out of it. One was actually the mine pit itself, and then one was the mechanic shop. Now, I don't know why I wasn't really thinking about it, but it became a problem getting into those areas. We waited in this lineup for, it seemed like forever, in the hot sun, and then realized that these tours weren't accessible and I couldn't really do it. But again, Highland Valley had a backup plan, and they actually brought in a handy dart accessible van for people with mobility challenges or with small kids to get around to look at things so we weren't able to do the the tours that i really really wanted to the mechanical area because i'm a mechanical guy but we were able to get on the handy dart bus and go look at the main pit so that's where we're going we're going to next so we're in the lineup for a mill tour so they're going to do a mill tour and then they've got a, an accessible outside the mine tour they're going to take and then over here there's a maintenance tour which sounds really cool too so i don't know i'm going to see if i can leave lieutenant here and then jump on the bus with my prosthetic and go from there never done this before guys so i don't know what to expect it's pretty hot here though <laughs> tours leave every 15 minutes and last Probably 45 minutes long. So guys, unfortunately, the mill tour I can't do. Um, my wife Lisa went and talked to them and they said there's a ton of stairs. I can't do a ton of stairs. So there's this uh, accessibility tour that we're gonna try to take. So, I mean, I, I understand it's this not an accessible place, but sucks because I'd really really like to show you guys but that's the lineup we're waiting in there so here guys so we're on the accessibility bus so this is the bus so apparently they do the outside of the outside of the grounds he does pull off at one part where you can get off and walk walk around a little bit so that'll be cool There's Kenzie and my wife Lisa. Community relations team here. So our team uh, does a whole bunch of things. <laughs> um, so we uh, work with a lot of the local indigenous communities surrounding the mine. Um, we also uh, do public events such as this one. So our team is really taking the lead for today. Uh, we also uh, manage all of the archaeology work that happens here on the mine. We do a lot of ground disturbance, so we need to make sure we're understanding what archaeology uh, we can potentially disturb, as well as um, make sure we're mitigating it in advance. So I'm curious, where is everyone from? I had a question. So are there archaeologists that work here? Yeah, so we have one on-staff archaeologist, and then we actually have a really big program we run all summer long. So we, have, we contract out a number of what we call permit holding archaeologists. Okay. But four days a week, we have somewhere around 50 to 60 people up here doing archaeological investigations. It's wow. Huge. Yeah. Sifting through cool. dirt. Yeah, just digging holes wow. and sifting away. Um, when you were 10. Pardon? Like yeah. I, was, I am an archaeologist by trade, so wow. I think it's super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Career in archaeology is a legit career path. It is. You, my parents liked me. Wow. Um, <laughs> cut off the hat, though. Like, I know. So our, our on-site archaeologist 100% does. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, we have about we have over 200 archaeology sites here at the mine uh, within cool. the permanent mine area, which is pretty. Now, do you guys regularly find artifacts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of it's what we would call like debitage. So yeah. it's things people leave behind yeah. that they didn't just like drop in garbage. Uh -huh. um, but like garbage is usually just the chips and stone tools, but we do find some tools. We've found some really neat things over the years. Back in the 80s, they found when they drained one of the lakes that is now where the valley pit is, 
they found what's called an atlatl, which is, it's a device that effectively comes back like this. You put a spear on it, you throw it forward, yeah, yeah. so it throws it really fast. So that piece of wood that they use as a lever to keep out, it's now in the museum in Victoria. Um, and then, yeah, we do often find a lot of what we would call projectile points, so arrowheads points, those type of things as well. Can you put this in there? Where's your Indiana Jones hat? I was like, I don't have one, but our you need a bull whip. 100% does. <laughs> <laughs> he really fits the bill. It's quite funny. He's also the hot dog. <laughs> 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 it's all glamour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So don't panic. That is what we are intending to do. Um, so for full trucks, uh, the drivers are on the left hand side. Um, and that is one so that when we're passing, um, what that allows is for them to be able to look down from their cab and see the berm, see the side of the road. Because effectively, they're, drive, they're driving like a two story house. So it's pretty hard to see your corners. Yeah, and then it also ensures that the two driver's cabs are at the far edge. So that in the event we have any kind of connection between the two trucks, ah, the drivers so are protected. Oh. Mm. So the, the mill building is behind us. This is the flotation okay. building here. Yeah, so that's where we effectively separate um, out the copper and other materials that we want to recover. They look like witch's cauldrons. I hate the coolest things ever. <laughs> I do actually prefer to them as that one. Anyone want to go to the witches? Yeah. What's the, um, how many people does it employ here? Uh, we're just over 1,500. Wow. So it's a, it's a big More operation. Logan Lake. <laughs> yes. Logan and then there's subcontractors <laughs> on that? No, 1,500 are just employees. Oh, just, so that's, okay. um, and we've got unionized employees and staff employees on site, but the 1,500 is all of our employees. Contractors are above of that. Oh, we don't wow. actually know the number of contractors we have on site. It's, it, it will fluctuate quite dramatically. Um, but it's it's a big operation. Um, so generally at any time during the like, work week, we probably have over 400 people actively working on site. Oh. And up here on the left, you will see a smushed light duty vehicle. Um, just so you know, that was that was done intentionally <laughs> as a reminder to people. Not a stunt. Not, yes. Uh, just as a reminder of the consequences when you are working in a mine, obviously uh, the consequence of inact like inattention can be really, really dramatic. Huh. So, uh, and the reason why that's so important is that if, like a whole truck driver could actually run over a light duty pickup like that and won't even feel it. Wow. So really? it's like, yeah, so the, the safety controls around communication are so critical to make sure that like everyone understands where everyone else is so that there's no chance of any kind of interaction. So we have about 54 haul trucks on site. Of those, about 28 are actually designed to be run driverless. How many? 28. Uh, I think about 28. 28. Yeah, 28 can be run fully autonomous. We don't, we're not running all of that right now. I think we're around 19. Without a driver? Um, without a driver. Oh my gosh, it's, wow. They're the These large... Guys were the first time, I think, oh, in the cool. Western, yeah. They're the Western yeah. Canada, yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, so we won't see any today. All of, we have, because obviously that... There's increased control with that. Right. So our lower next pit, pit which is back up that direction, is our autonomous culture mining zone right now. Do they just run by themselves, or do you, does someone have to have a control, like a remote control car? So they, they, they sort of run like a robot vacuum. Oh, they have cool, a task okay. that they're supposed to do. Oh, um, cool. But the best analogy I have. It's a Roomba? Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's a really big Roomba. Big Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they do, like, they will pick up when they're coming up to, like, a shovel to pick up like, their load. Then all of a sudden there's communication between the auto truck and the the shovel with us oh, inside it. Okay. The way okay. our systems run is that everyone who is, like any person who's either in a vehicle or off foot in that area carries what's called an A stop, which is effectively a button. And if you press it, everything shuts down. Uh, all of the autonomous vehicles? Everything does. Yeah. Okay. Um, similarly, if, so the autonomous vehicles, like a Roomba, are not great when they, can, they come across an obstacle. Okay. Uh, they will immediately shut themselves down. If they uh, shut themselves down, it shuts down the whole system. Wow. Again, just from a safety perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's lines of trucks to get all just in the right, same route. Right, right, right. What is, what is the name of the autonomous truck? Do they have a name or? Uh, no, I think they're actually just like a, they're a, like an, an add-on 
to an exist, like our existing okay. trucks. Um, so we are currently like retrofitting a lot oh, okay. of our trucks okay. to be a, ready. Good. I believe that's correct. And that's been accepted by the unions. Yep. Stuff? Like, yeah, I know it, there was a big thing on that with getting right. There's been a lot of concern about what that does for yeah, um, employment. Um, yeah, for employment. We are realizing that as part of that, there are also uh, a lot of, like, because the trucks are very sensitive. So, like, if a rock falls off the truck in front, the truck behind sees it, shuts down. Yeah. So, we find we've actually, we have to increase the number of builder operators we have. So, yeah, so we did make the commitment that by implementing the autonomous knowledge, there's not going to, like, we're not laying anyone off. After traveling for what seemed like 10 or 15 minutes and barraging this poor lady with questions about the mine, we got to see the open pit and got to where it actually was happening. Now this thing, you can't see the bottom of it. You can see water at the bottom of it, but where you see water, there's actually 14 more staircases down to the bottom. And they're expected to still dig another nine stairs before they lose their their current permit. I guess their current permit comes up in 2028 and they've applied for continuation to 2045. The mine is just staggering. So I'll flip to the clip with the gentleman answering some questions about the equipment you can see in the mine. And that, that water truck... Uh, well, there are 245,000 liters of water. 245,000 liters. <laughs> and what's the weight of that thing, man? It's on a 240-ton truck. Uh, so I think the GVWR, I don't know the exact one, but I know it comes out at 78% of the load capacity of that truck. It's so it's still not loaded yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> Big boy toys. Yeah. And that's diesel powered, right? They're, they're not yeah. electric or anything yet? All our haul trucks are all diesel. So that down there, that is that a semi sitting there or is that little speck? <laughs> Whatever at that is. Very, at the very far? Yeah. That's a gen, a gen set. Oh, it's so a gen everything set. power associated from the power lines comes down on 13 8 cable, runs down to the subs, then it splits out. And can come out at 4160 or 7200, depending what we're what we're powering. <laughs> yeah, KV. KV. Yeah. Oh. Right. So for, and this is a stat from a while ago, but in 24 hours, and this was in 2015, in 24 or in 24 hours, this mine uses more electricity than the city of Kamloops. Sorry, yes. In 24 it, hours. Yes. Holy per ratio. Cow. Yeah. Maybe so Camels might be a little bit bigger now, but... I so these pipes you see there, they're full of water? That yes, flat. they are. This is all reclamation from uh, pit dewatering. So this used to be, there used to be two lakes right here. Little and Big Divide Lake. So obviously we have a lot of water infrastructure and pumping infrastructure to keep up. The, the lakes were there for a reason. So we need to, we keep pumping them out. And if we don't and we stop, that's what happens to the bottom of our pits. So that water level table is basically, there's still 14 benches below that. 14 that we, of those levels. Yeah. 14 yeah. below. And then was she right when she was saying you can add nine more on top of those 14 before you're at the bottom? Yeah. Okay. If we get that far. That's a lot, that's a, that's that that's government a lot grant? of water that frees into that pit. And is that good system, water like or is that sulfur water or it, it's regular like runoff through, through springs whatever it mm. picks up through general runoff but like the contamination is just the, that water is very low they were saying that they started digging this pit here in front of us in 1982 it took 38 years because we're in 2024 to get to the level it's at right now. Just incredible. That's a half a mile wide by two miles deep is what Google comes up with. Just mind staggering. Incredible. Okay, we better start heading back here. We mine about 300, 
kilotons a day. Um, which is a number that makes no sense to me because it's so large. <laughs> but like throughout the year, it is, I think, I'm look at my notes again. I'm pretty sure it is equivalent to like 19 football fields stacked in your farm. Wow. To give you an idea, it was all just laid out, what that would look like. And then, so once, so they run a blast down in the bottom, you could have seen the drills down from the bottom, and the shovel will dig up the rock. Um, do I my alarm telling me? What are we supposed to be? Um, and so we use something here called a summer shovel, something called shovel sense. So effectively, it's like a radar that when it goes oh, to yeah. scoop the rock, oh, you can tell whether it's ore, which is what we want, that has copper in it, or waste rock, which is over oh, it's rock that doesn't have anything of value. It yeah. can and tell you that. Yeah. Um, it, oh, this, yeah, it like scans the rock and is able to tell by whatever gets That's back. That's incredible. Yeah. And so that is actually huge money savings for us because it means we are directing the waste rock directly to a dump yeah. and not sending it through the system where it gets crushed goes into it, yeah, it goes through the mill, like through the mill and then ends up as tailings. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we do that, it gets from the shovel into the mine truck. Mine truck will take it up to a crusher, I can't see one, that, but crusher's four and five down in that direction. Um, and so they'll dump their load into a crusher and it'll effectively crush it down to about the size, like all the big rock down to about the size of a football. From there it goes on to a conveyor. That conveyor takes it up to our stockpiles, which are those big three domes with the Canadian flag on them. Um, Sorry, that so those domes are the stockpile. Yeah. Okay. So the reason we built the domes was because we were losing a lot of dust off our stockpiles. So those oh. domes prevent dust into the environment. They also mean we're not losing copper as dust awesome. into the environment. Wow. So it's good for environmental reasons, but also yeah. good for our monetary reasons. Wow. Uh, we also, because of the Canadian flag, we had to submit an application to Heritage Pitch Canada in order to be able to put that flag on them. No it's the largest Canadian flag in the world. Really? Is that like copyright wow. protected or something? <laughs> Perfect. Cool. So who's, where does the copper go after it's refined? Um, so yeah, from here you'll get copper concentrate. It'll go, it gets trucked to Ashcroft, put on the train from there, and then goes to the port in Vancouver. And from there it goes um, generally overseas, usually to Asia, is where the majority of our schools. So these, when it comes out, it doesn't look like copper. It just looks like rock. You know, it's powder. Yeah. So what happens is the tailings gets put in the tailings facility, and then it slowly separates out. So we end up with closest, like closest to here is this sort of tailings slurry, and then farther down the valley towards our, our LL Dam at the far end towards Ashcroft. There you'll see more like what looks like this beautiful blue water, um, and then we pump that water back up into the system. So we try and reuse about oh. 70 to 80 percent of all the water here. That's oh, like, that's so cool. that we're not pulling from the environment as much as possible. The first time I saw it, I was like, yeah, it's probably not safe. <laughs> so, how big is this property? Oh, in terms of hectares, I don't actually yeah, know off the top yeah. of my head. Yeah, I think like the tailings facility is 11 kilometers long and about 2 kilometers wide. So, and that's just the tailings facility. So. What is copper used for? Um, I mean, obviously, we don't have the pennies anymore, so what's the number one use for? So, copper, copper is really integral in the sort of carbon economy transition. So, electric wiring, which obviously is electric cars, yeah. it is critical. So, wind power, solar power, EV vehicles is really where we're getting a real big demand for copper up right now. Um, and just tech as a company is we, so we recently divested ourselves of our coal asset and we're really focused on those sort of critical minerals for the future, really to support that transition in terms of like the greener economy. So real focus on zinc and copper, both of which are used um, really in those transition um, needs electric vehicles. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour of Highland Valley Copper. There's there's four tours, but the other ones aren't really accessible. So I think we're just going to call it here. I am going to put up some drone shots of the area, but man, it's incredible. And do you hear talking about the scoop? Like they can, they scoop the rock and they can actually tell you what's in the scoop, whether it's worth strapping or not. That's just such cool technology. So glad to get to experience this. Good job on 
Highland Valley. I just want to thank the Highland Valley and Anna there for the tour. Because to have this opportunity is not an everyday thing, especially for a major company here to open up their doors. I'm sure it's costing them money, both with what they can get off the ground and the, the what they're spending as far as um, staffing and everything else. So such a cool thing. Thank you guys so much for going on this journey with me of Highland Valley Copper mine, open pit mine, Canada's largest open pit copper mine. Sorry, bus just went by. Just a reminder, I leave these videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Fridays are just shorts. Wednesday and Sunday or whatever I'm up to. Today it's being at a mine. If you guys will consider subscribing to my channel, I really appreciate that. If not, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I'm all good with that. Thank you and we'll catch you on the next one.